Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about primitive wrapper classes. I'm going to open up my web browser at my website, javacjava.com, select menu, and then Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the primitive wrapper classes. Now there are eight primitive data types in the Java language. Byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, and boolean. Different rules apply to primitive types versus object types, and vice versa. There are many occasions when we need to convert back and forth between object and primitive values, and Java provides us the ability to do this via wrapper classes. What is a primitive wrapper class, you may ask? Well, the sole purpose of a wrapper is to provide the ability to return a primitive data type from an object or to provide an object from a primitive data type. The wrapper classes do this by using a combination of constructors and methods. Now, there's a wrapper class designed specifically for each and every one of the primitive data types. Byte, short, integer, long, float, double, character, and boolean. Now notice that the class name is identical, except of course the uppercase first letter to the primitive data type on six of the eight classes. Only integer and character differ in that respect. In other words, you know, it's int up here and it's char up here. But other than that, like byte is byte, short is short, and so on and so forth. Just uppercase for the wrapper class. Each one of the eight wrapper classes has overloaded constructors and quite a few methods. I will be going into great detail on each um, individual wrapper class in future tutorials, but before I do so, I need to introduce you to the concept of boxing. I'm not talking like punch somebody in the face. So, but boxing is the technical term for encapsulating a value within an object. Unboxing is the technical term for retrieving a value from an object. Um, I'll demonstrate an example of an immutable class, right? An immutable class, and I'll uh, basically all the primitive wrappers are all immutable classes. So um, let me start this sentence back over without interrupting it. So I'll demonstrate an example of an immutable class that will box a primitive int into an object, then unbox it by invoking a method. So for example, I've got this, uh, this class called int wrapper right here, okay? And basically I've got a and it's marked public and final, right? And final really is the keyword here. I'll explain why in just a moment there. And then I've got a, a single a single state value here, right? Which is int int val, right? And I've also marked that as private, so it's not, not visible outside of there. And final, right? And by marking this final, means that once I initialize it, its value can never change. And, it, and if I don't set its initial value, like if I did equal zero right there, I could not set it uh, later on and change it. So you must set it, then if you don't initialize it up here, you have to set it in the constructor. So in the constructor, I can, I'm passing, uh, well, I'm receiving a single parameter int val here of int type, and I'm setting that equal to int val, okay? So fairly simple on, on initializing the variable there, right? But um, the two things that require a class to be immutable is that, you know, you can't, um, it can't be inherited, right? You can't go extends int wrapper, that, that won't, that'll fail on compile. And that the state cannot be changed, right? And this is the only state inside of here. So um, and then I might end up rehashing some of this here in just a minute. But then I've got this single method here called get int, right? And it returns an int type, and it simply returns our int val up here. So now we can, now that we've got this, basically, this is like a, this is a, a wrapper class that wraps up the int. So now we can make an object out of our new int wrapper class and box the primitive int value 41. So int i equals 41, right? Int wrapper iw, so I'm creating a new iw reference variable of int wrapper object equals new, and that's um, a new reference to an int wrapper object and invoking the constructor that matches the 
this signature right here, which is this right up here, right? Int i is what I'm expecting. So we're, in this particular statement, I'm boxing the primitive int type value into the object. You might be thinking, well, what's so special about this? And the answer is there really isn't anything particularly special about this, but it, uh, it's necessary to lay the, the foundation here. It's like I'm putting some little bricks in the corner of a foundation, and that's what it's going to serve on. And then, you know, this is going to blow up into a full-fledged, you know, kind of wow moment for you, most likely. Um, not in this tutorial, by the way. Maybe in the next tutorial and the tutorial after that, you know, it'll be like, oh, okay, wow, all this really is starting to make sense. So, but we'll get to that. Um, then I'm going to say i equals iw, right, the int... Uh, the reference variable iw here and use the dot operator to invoke the get int method which simply returns back an int type the int val right our little private very vari final variable up here so and then i'm just assigning that to the original int i okay so my example int wrapper class is immutable immutable means that once its state has been initialized its state cannot be changed the only state in my example class is the variable int val, and by declaring it final means that its value cannot be changed once it is initialized. Now because I don't assign a value when I declare it, the value must be assigned in a constructor. Now that ensures the variable can be initialized once and only once. I add the modifier to the I add the final modifier to the class, and that prevents the class from being inherited or extended. In other words, my example class cannot be a superclass. Now, if this paragraph does not make sense, then you might want to review my final primitive data type variables tutorial and my final classes tutorial. Okay, let's get ready and come down here and do some code. So let's we'll just highlight this, control C to copy, or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen here, and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, type in CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. I'm going to open up my command prompt, type in Java C, and press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, then you'll want to watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I will make a directory called Java using the MD command. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to make another directory here, and I'm going to just call this um, Primitive Wrappers. I'm going to change directory to the Primitive Wrappers folder here, and then I'm going to notepad Primitive Wrappers.java. Primitive Wrappers.java is going to be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Okay, let's go ahead and control V to paste that in, or right click and select paste. <clears throat> okay, so basically here's what I've got. I've got my final class int wrapper here, basically what we talked about up there, right? In the constructor, it'll go ahead and set int val right there to whatever's being passed in. So this dot int val equals int val. So, and then uh, just a simple little uh, method there, get int val, that'll return an int type, which is that up there. Okay, so now. Um, up here into the main method, pretty much what I talked about before there. I'm going to set int i equal to 41, call my int wrapper, um, or create a new int wrapper reference variable, int wrapper type, set it equal to a new int wrapper instance that will basically contain 41 for its state, because there isn't anything else in the state there, right? And that will box the primitive int type value into the object. Then on the next statement, I'm going to unbox the int value and re basically reassign it to the original primitive i. So I'm turning the i41 into an object, um, basically holding the state. The object state will be 41 here. And then I'm getting the object state out of here and, and basically assigning it back to a primitive type, right? So that's the whole purpose of, an, of a wrapper. Now the real wrapper is called integer. That's the integer class, and, and I've set it up so it's identical, right? New, bada boom, bada bing. I'm gonna box the primitive int type value into the um, integer object, right? So the integer object, its state back basically is still 41 at this point in time, right? And so on the next line, I'm going to unbox the int value from the wrapper object, right? So I'm gonna take the 
the I41 out of the ref out of that integer object and reassign it to a primitive type I again, right? And I'm going to display it to the the console there, right? And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm a there's so many like various different um, methods for these. There's like there's like dozens just for integer alone that that you can invoke there. But so ref is my reference variable here, and here I just uh, called ref dot int val, which returns out an int value um, from the um, from the state there, right? Now if I wanted a string value containing 41, and that's literally a string, I can invoke the dot two string method here too, right? From the integer object there. And the concat method, I use that if you're, if you watch my concat method tutorial, then you're very familiar with that. I, you know, you can't really mix and match stuff. You actually have to provide a string value kind of in there. So that'll, you know, basically work there. And then I'll just display that to the console. These last two statements here were basically showing, giving you a little taste of what's to come on some of this stuff here. But let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to come up here, clear my screen, Java C to compile this file. Java to run the Java virtual machine. And we want to invoke the primitive wrappers class. And basically we get 41 and I value 41. It's so not particularly exciting on, the, um, on this particular piece of code here. But it's all just kind of introducing you to the idea of boxing stuff and then unboxing stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and get rid of this and leave you with some final thoughts here. So the next tutorials are going to tie in closely to this tutorial. The integer class tutorial and the auto boxing and auto unboxing tutorial will introduce you to many of the seemingly magical things that Java does for us without us even knowing. Uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.